In the previous video, we saw how to graph some basic functions with polar coordinates. We're going to see three more examples in this video. Let's start with r equals sine of theta. Sometimes it helps to look at the graph in rectangular coordinates, so we'll put a copy of that up here. We start with theta at 0, and sine of 0 is 0, so we put a dot at the origin. As theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, sine of theta increases to 1. So on the graph, we trace a curve like this one. From here, we look at theta from pi over 2 to pi. On that interval, sine decreases from 1 to 0. So we trace this curve, which ends up where we started. So what happens between pi and 2 pi? Remember from the previous video that we saw what happens when r is negative, and that's what happens on this interval. So while the angle indicates a ray pointing downward, we draw the points as if the ray were facing in the opposite direction, and we end up retracing what we've already drawn. Now we've reached theta equals 3 pi over 2, and as we continue to 2 pi, we once again return to the origin. Let's now look at a more complicated example. We'll graph r equals sine of 2 theta. We can, if we want, sketch the graph of sine of 2x in rectangular coordinates up here for reference. We start again at 0, but now everything happens twice as fast as before. So instead of reaching 1 at pi over 2, it reaches it at pi over 4. Continuing to pi over 2, the graph returns to the origin, and we get this graph that looks like a flower petal. Now, between pi over 2 and pi, sine of 2 theta goes from 0 to negative 1, back to 0, so we trace another petal. Between pi and 3 pi over 2, the function goes from 0 to 1 to 0, so we trace a third petal. And last, as you might guess, we trace a fourth petal from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Finally, let's graph r equals 1 plus 2 sine of theta. Once again, we'll sketch a graph in rectangular coordinates for reference. This time, we don't start with a point at the origin. Since 1 plus 2 times sine of 0 equals 1, we start here instead. The pattern we follow is similar to what we used both times before, though. As theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, r increases from 1 to 3. And then from pi over 2 to pi, it decreases back to 1. Between pi and 3 pi over 2, r decreases from 1 to negative 1 which means that it passes through the origin at an angle like this, and then continues, remember that r is now negative, in the direction opposite to the direction of the angle. We end up here at 3 pi over 2. Continuing to 2 pi, we wind back around like this to where we started. It's worth noting that this angle is the angle at which the curve hits the origin when theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. Likewise, this is the angle at which it hits the origin when theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. I'll leave it to you to determine those two angles. I'll leave you with two questions. First, each of these graphs can be drawn completely by graphing only for values of theta between 0 and 2 pi. Is that true for any polar function? Second, I refer to the equations in this video as functions, but the graphs all fail the vertical line test. What's happened to that test in this context?